today. Uh, I chose this one. It's called Looney Lunar Phases. You can see the, the screenshot of how it looks on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse right here. And I chose this activity for a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, uh, International Observe the Moon Night is October 28th, so it's coming up quick. And if you're thinking, oh, I can't really do this full-fledged program, you know, I can't do an hour-long program, you can still integrate International Observe the Moon Night into something like a story time. Um, so this activity specifically works well with the idea of doing a story time and maybe having a small activity um, tied into it. So it has that um, literature component to it as well, and I'll explain kind of uh, how that ties in. <clears throat> also, um, explaining moon phases to an audience, it can be really confusing. Um, it's a tough concept for a lot of participants to understand, a lot of younger patrons. Um, so this doesn't necessarily try to explain why uh, the moon has different phases. Instead, it just kind of points out those different phases and, and allows um, patrons or participants to, to kind of tie a particular moon phase um, with what they see in the sky. So they might not know, I don't know what gibbous is, I don't know what a crescent is, what's waxing, what's waning. Uh, this activity is going to kind of help them understand um, those terms and tie in a visual with those terms as well. So you can see on the right hand side, um, it might be coming up a little grainy on this slide, but uh, it's about maybe approximately a 30 minute activity. It's also pretty cheap, uh, maybe one to five dollars. Really all you need is a box of Oreos, and if you're anything like me, you always have a box of Oreos laying around. Uh, and you need maybe some paper towels and a couple of print off sheets as well. So really excited about this activity. I'll give you guys kind of a brief overview. Uh, to start out with, you read a book or read a story, a poem, or even listen to a song that ties into the moon, that has something to do with the moon. Um, I like the idea of doing a poem or a book, um, and I think you could probably play a song um, in the background. Here we go. So I've um, pulled a few different books and songs and poems that you could use. Of course, I'm sure there are plenty more out there, but you kind of want to tie in that cultural element. So not necessarily why is it a full moon, but um, what throughout culture and, and throughout our, our history, what what kind of influence does that um, those different lunar phases have um, on uh, on human civilization? So you know every full moon has a different name. You have the worm moon. You might have uh, the wolf moon. Um, and so it's really interesting to, to understand um, how those names kind of came to be. I think there's also like the, the sap moon or, so, you know, during, during fall when uh, trees start to sap. Um, so tying that cultural element is, in is great. So here's a list of books. Here's a list of songs and poems. Um, and of course, once you go into the activity, those will um, get pulled up as well. So you start out by reading a book, reading a song, reading a poem, and then you kind of dive into the... Um, vocabulary, if you will, or learning about those actual different phases of the moon. So here are the supplies. Really all you need are a few Oreo cookies. It says you can also do round cream cheese sandwich crackers. I, of course, prefer Oreos. Uh, a paper towel, a plastic spoon and or a plastic knife, and this sheet, cookie moon phases. Now I'll go back two slides, and you see on this slide um, they've used a paper plate and they've created their own chart of the different phases of the moon in the different order. That is great. Um, I think that's maybe kind of somewhat more of an advanced concept of um, having them actually label it out and, and place those different cookies. Um, so I would recommend if you have, if this is your first lesson, uh, if it's your first bit of information about the moon, go ahead and print out this cookie moon phases sheet um, and have your students create their Oreo moon phases and place them on this sheet instead of having them do it on a paper plate. Uh, and writing out those different those different moon phases. So I will show you guys. Give me a second to go over to my other cam here. Also, I chose this activity because, well, who doesn't like to eat cookies? All right. So you can see here I have my cookie moon phases sheet. I have um, a plastic knife and a plastic fork. Of course, you could do this with other things like a, I don't know, maybe even a toothpick or like a tongue uh, depressor. I have my box of cookies here. And I've already kind of created some. Um, and so basically, you'll have your uh, patrons look at this sheet. They'll identify these different phases of the moon. And so there's a few different ways you could fil facilitate this. Um, the first, or the way I would personally do it, is to have your uh, patrons, you know, you're talking to them and you're saying, okay, so first we're going to talk about a new moon. Now, a new moon is when it is completely or almost completely dark. And then have them 
scrape off all of the frosting. It's the best part, I know. And for the new moon, you could actually just turn it around and put it down there. So let's go on. We're moving on to the waxen crescent. Uh, you will have, let's see, I've already gotten this one off a little bit. So you have your, uh, you have your cookie here. Scrape up that icing. It's not going to be perfect, of course. I don't think your, your uh, younger kids will mind that too much. You can place your waxen crescent right, crescent right on there. The next one we're going to do, we're going to do a first quarter or a half moon. You can talk about it. You can say the rat, right half of the moon is light. Scrape it off a little bit, place that on there, and so on and so forth. And you can do that um, for all eight of these phases. All right, give me just one second to get my webcam pulled back up. All right. So a really fun activity, a really tasty activity, too. I know um, everybody at SSI uh, here is excited that I chose this activity so we can eat cookies afterwards. Um, Kendra I said, or you said, I won't lie, playing with cookies makes us the best job in the world. You are absolutely right. Um, even at the ALA conference that we did a session for, we ended up playing with cookies, and I ended up eating a lot of them as well. Any suggestions for uh, kids with food intolerances? That's a great question, Kendra. And points out that Oreos are daily uh, dairy free. Um, I don't think there's any nut product in Oreos. I'm not an expert. You would probably need to look that up yourself. Uh, but if there are nuts, of course, that's a big concern with allergens um, or with you know gluten intolerances. Um, so definitely, you want to check your ingredients beforehand and check with the kids to make sure that there aren't any major allergies. That's a very good point. All right. Any other questions about this activity before we move on? Okay. Do this with any fruit that has a different color and meat and peel. That's a good. That's good advice. Yeah, a little bit healthier option with the fruit. And guys, like I said, if you want to have the paper plate and have them make that own template for themselves, that's great. It's just somewhat, maybe a little bit more advanced, uh, maybe good as a second or a third lesson. And also, while they're eating the cookies, that's a good time to, again, talk about those cultural elements uh, of the moon, too. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce.